Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a little while since I've been back here. It's gonna be me tonight by myself, so I'm gonna do my best to try to keep up with you guys while um, I'm trying to get this level blocked out. And it would probably help if we start it where you actually start as a player. Uh, so welcome to level four. Uh, I've put a little bit of work into this. Uh, most of it's spent working on textures and all that fun stuff. So um, yeah. Feel free to talk and chat while I work. I've got a lot of stuff left to do on this thing, and really can't wait for it to be done because the next big one is going to be medical. So, woohoo! Uh, some of the the interesting changes I've made to this map would be primarily trying to add a bit of um, I don't even know the best way to put it <laughs> interior design touches to it. There we go. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, instead of having lights on the ground, uh, as if you go over here, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, actually, we're in Sabo's office. Let's hop up and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Whee. <laughs> Never thought I'd be so happy to see the word die on the ground. <laughs> Alright. Actually, I'm in the wrong part of the station. Let me hop back up and go through that bulkhead right here. So, in the original, uh, when I was working through this room, I noticed that it kind of suffers from lights on the floor syndrome, and I'm trying to kind of utilize the space a bit more effectively. So you'll see that the um, I've kind of installed the lights for this dur alloy paneling is, and I think it kind of makes more sense the way I've done it. And I've kind of put some lights in the ceiling too. So let's look at this side by side, and you guys can get an idea of what I've been doing. So I think this, personally, I think it looks a lot better. Um, it's more cohesive. Could probably use a little bit more light, but you know, you gotta have that horror vibe, right? So, yeah, and if you go through here, um, you'll notice that you immediately transition into the area uh, affectionately known as the skating rink, or the the slalom jump, where you kinda come sliding down off of here and jump into an ambush of Security One robots on either side of you. Um, I've gotten through and I've added emissiveness to pretty much every texture I can think of now, and I try to make them all kind of life. Um, as best as I can, given the limitations of the material system we use. So, um, yeah, I'm loving the way this is turning out. I think it's significantly better than the original in some areas. Um, still some work left to do, but it's getting there. <clears throat> Let's see what you guys are saying. Great, people love it. <laughs> kind of worried there. Sometimes uh, people don't like change, so it can be a little difficult to um, convince Convince people to abandon the idea they may have had for the way something, you know, looks. Um, so that being said, one of the things that I found interesting too is that in the original, if you're wondering why those vents are red, well, that's because they're red here. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to keep that. I could turn it off at any point, but I think it adds a neat touch to it. So, at least the way I've got it set up, it kind of looks like it's spiraling in. So I, I kind of like that. But let's try to move into this next room and, and uh, keep pushing at it. So, let's see. There we go. Uh, I, I this is one of my favorite textures in the original game, these power conduits. Because uh, it's one of the few textures that actually convincingly, at least to me, conveys the idea of what it's supposed to be. Um, like, these things really stand out, and they, they look... There's some of the better looking textures in the game, including the, uh, I don't know why they would still have it, but the incandescent light bulbs in 2072. So, we'll go ahead and add all that in here. If I sound a little weird too, my wife came down with something, and I think I might be coming down with it too. So, just a little heads up. And thankfully you can see all the materials I've been making over here. I've got a ton of these things that I've been, uh, converting one by one. I may even show you the process of how I do some of these. Just, you know, to, to fill the time and give you something interesting to look at besides what you showed or what we showed last week. And I should probably also towards the end show you guys the final version of research with a playthrough. I think you'll probably like that. So there we go. Now some of the texturing in here is a little off. Uh, you can see like this piece doesn't exactly fit. So it's pretty simple to kind of just take that, make it fit. Not too much of a pain. Whew. 
I'm, I'm glad this BSP stuff is, is easy too, because uh, this could easily be a very giant pain in the butt. And see, that doesn't even match, so I'd have to actually go through here and do the UVs correctly to make that map correct on the wall. No, oh, never mind. It worked. I think this is also power conduit as well. In this little area. Yep, that's all power conduit. Could probably just type it in instead of dragging and dropping, but what fun is that, right? So if you guys are curious, uh, a good chunk of my day spent working on this stuff. Uh, in between two jobs, I handle all this stuff for Quixel and I work for NDS on the side. And it's a, it's a fun work-life balance trying to balance two different jobs simultaneously. But it's it's really rewarding. I love doing this. Um, every day to, to get here and, and kind of shape the final product of what we're making is really cool. Um, have quite a bit of fun with this. Of course, some of these textures don't even align. I have to go back and redo them anyway. There we go. And I need to copy and paste lights in here too, so they actually kind of fill the room. Now, uh, if you guys were here for the research stream, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to actually spend the time and bake the lighting. Uh, I think it's not going to run well, and I really don't want to test it to see if it will. I just have a feeling it might cause the stream to go crazy. And you guys are here to watch, you're not here to, you know, have nothing to see. So I think it's a bit smarter to play it safe here. can't wait to tackle these uh, tile sets for the actual finished version. Um, not that this probably won't go into the finished version or anything, but you know what I mean. I want to actually do the, the updated version of this stuff and take a look at the concepts Rob has for this work. Although, if, if the uh, originals any, or the, the tile sets that we have in Metahool are any indication, we might actually not even need his concepts. We might just kind of trace over what exists and uh, rebuild that. Because a lot of this really translates very well. Uh, surprisingly, um, if, you've, if you guys have seen the medical work that Chris has been doing, it's almost one-to-one -one in a lot of ways. So, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. I'll check chat in one second. I just don't want to get too backlogged on the work here. There we go. Save that and then hop back into the chat. Oh, and if you if you like my shirt, and it's kind of become a little meme for me to wear a different shirt every week, um, this is actually from ThinkGeek. Uh, surprisingly, uh, ThinkGeek has two stores, two physical stores here in Orlando. So I just went down the street and picked one up. <laughs> it's only like twenty bucks. So. All right. So another thing we have to do to make this look correct too is add what's called a uh, reflection capture actor, and this kind of determines the uh, the way the the reflections in that particular area are going to look. So by adding this in there, I kind of determine not determine, but I force the the engine to actually build the correct lighting for the environment. This should look significantly better in just a sec, and if it doesn't, well, I guess it needs to be built, but. Yeah, it didn't make much of a change, but that's okay. It'll it'll come when we build. I just can't do it right now. I really don't want to kill the stream. I'm sure you guys understand. Uh, and actually, there's a door that goes over there, and I need to go grab it. Oh, you know what? While you're here, let me show you some of the cool stuff I've done with the emissiveness of these textures. And that's in 3D artist parlance, emissiveness is the action of emitting light. So like this door here, or... For example, these energy lights up here, which are now emitting light as well. Or if you go into this room, I've actually taken the liberty of adding some animation to these things to make them look a bit more convincing. Uh, in the original, these didn't even have any um, any detail like this. Like if you compare that power monitor to the one that's already there, you'll see what I'm talking about. I really should have grabbed some stamina up stimulants to run around the station, because like this is really slow and I start getting tired after like running around the block. But yeah, this is the same spot that we were just in. And if you compare and contrast, you can see there's a pretty significant difference between the two. Oops, turn off mouse look. 
I even have the high voltage sign. I don't even know why I'm pointing at my screen. You can't see what I see except through the, <laughs> the stream. It's a force of habit. But uh, you can see the high voltage stuff actually uh, does the exact same thing it does in the original. Except it's a bit more believable, I would say. Uh, I even hooked up these little uh, blinky lights too in a kind of a roundabout way to make them sort of kind of work. I like how it turned out. It's got kind of a retro 60s look to it. Same thing with uh, this room here. Um, a lot of emissiveness that I added to these textures. These balls are going to actually be computer nodes. They're just placeholders for the time being. Um, the biggest challenge, too, in this particular area is getting this texture to work. Because in the game, this is a... Uh, it's kind of funny. It's called non-dent steel paneling. And I don't know about you guys. That's pretty dented to me. Really scratched up and gouged, right? Um, but you can tell that the way Rob had painted it, that this is supposed to be highly reflective, or at least relatively reflective. You can see the dark kind of moving down to the light there. And that could be because these lights were meant to be paired with it, so therefore they're casting light from the bottom and it's kind of simulating that. But the limitations of this game, I mean, you can see that it, even if I come over here with my light on, it's going to be the same way, right? It's baked into the texture. That's, that's part of it. So there's really nothing that you can do to get around that, except what I'm doing, which is taking the original stuff and kind of giving it that same look. But I, I really just don't like lights on the floor. I just don't think it makes any sense. And I really like the way it looks now, uh, especially with some of these tiles in the area too, where you can kind of have this grippy surface here and these floor tiles on the side. I think it just adds more to it. And, feels more believable, rather than just being kind of like a repetitious single texture being placed all over the place. Let me check chat too, I hope you guys agree. <laughs> oh, and if you want the link to the playlist, um, I can have it, I'll post it in, in Discord later on if you guys remind me. Um, I made it custom for this particular stream, so every time I pop on I just kind of add or remove. So, let's see, what else are you guys saying? Um, Photon proliferation bulbs. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. And, uh, third player, I'm really glad that you like the transparency. Um, honestly, I, it makes my life a lot easier to be able to talk to you guys about what I'm doing. Um, I'm not a big fan of being kept under, under wraps about stuff um, in other jobs I've been in, uh, especially related to, uh, I don't want to say the words, but government work. Um, I wasn't able to talk about anything, and here I can actually freely talk for the most part within within reason. I can't tell you everything we're planning to do, but I can tell you most of it, which is nice, and you guys seem to really like that. So in the vein of here's things I've done to upgrade this area. Man, we got to get these skulls and bones in here. Um, check this out. So as you guys recall, or may recall, this room is really boring. Like, this is seriously like I would have to wear like welder's goggles to work in this place because my eyes would hurt so bad working at a place that had non-stop lights everywhere. I mean, that's just some of the worst design decision I've ever seen in my life. Like, you can't work like this. No person can work like this. So what I did is I'm thinking, okay, well, you're going to come in here and you're going to, you know what, we're going to play through it. Let's try that instead. We plop. Wait, that's Sabo's office. I can't get back up. The repulsors don't work yet. Hold on. They'll install that next Tuesday. There we go. Alright. Okay, Sabo's office is there. There we are. Plop. Perfect. Okay, this is what I envision. This is the exact same area. So if we come into the same spot, you can see the difference. I think this makes a lot more sense, personally. And I think it's a lot more believable. Um, especially with the, the textures actually emitting light like they you know should have, even in the original. Um, and this is a, a, the weird thing to me too, these textures, um, in the original game, the I think it was the brightness of the pixels determined whether or not they, they would have kind of like a weird pulsing effect. And these textures had lights all over them, but they never lit up, ever, like in the medical deck. But on the other decks they did, it was kind of a strange... Um, it's really weird, like they just couldn't figure out which ones to work and which ones not to work. But I'm really liking the... Oh, let me turn off the light too. There we go. So this is more accurate. 
I mean, it's the same room, right? But I just feel like mine is a bit more cohesive. And I even went a little bit above and beyond and I tried to match up these, um, these medical cabinets with their drawers going above the top here just so it wouldn't kind of end abruptly. And then connect over here and then just to you know, keep it cohesive. I think it works. I'm happy with it. Let's check chat. And yeah, don't worry, I'm I'm very, uh, as far as HUD goes, like, I am totally on board with you guys on making spelling cohesive. I will not knowingly put in spelling mistakes and or uh, have one object share a different name with something else if it's a, the same object. Like, the original was very notorious for that, uh, at least to me, like it stood out. And that drove me nuts. Um, I mean, heck, you can, you can see it in, you might even be able to see it in this level. Uh, let's see here. You got a power monitor, molybdenum paneling, diagnostic module, data transfer array. That's all fine. Uh, you go in here. Uh, let's see here. Non-dent, environmental regulator, non-dent, non-dent, graffiti. That's fine. Uh, where is the... There's there's one that really bugs me, and I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. But it might be back here. Get out of my face. You too, get out of my face. Uh, nope, not that. It's not that either. It's one of these in here. I don't want to get stuck trying to find it too much, but um, there are a couple of... Actually, it's on research. I know where it's at now. But yeah, there's a couple of places in the game where you'll see two identical textures, and they have like a completely different name. It just makes no logical design sense whatsoever. Uh, so I want to try to avoid that, if, if at all possible. Just you know, for in-game uh, cohesion. Like You want that to look like it should. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense if it doesn't. I never did figure out how a gorilla tiger got its way in here, much less managed to stand over there. Like, how does that make any sense at all? Like, we're all we're talking about stuff that makes sense and doesn't. How the hell did he get from here all the way over to here without even having an access card? Like, he's cool, and I like the way he looks, but that just makes no damn sense at all to me. So, I'm just... yeah. <laughs> I guess it's for shock effect, maybe. So... Let me go back to that room and I'll start working on that one. I gotta say, man, the way these lights are looking in here is so cool. It really gets a nice ambience to it. Delete that door. I guess these are gonna be temporary force bridge um, placeholders, so I'm not gonna mess with those for the time being. And honestly, uh, in terms of work, uh, I'm not really checking the chat just yet, but I will in a second. I picked storage because I thought it would be the fastest one out of what I had available to work on. And I'm not sure I'm really feeling that. This is a pretty decently sized level. I'm probably about 30% through it right now in the past couple of days. Getting this stuff done and, and done right takes a significant amount of time, but I mean, I think you guys can agree that the end result is definitely worth it. Don't crash, don't crash, thank you. Yeah, and for those of you guys who weren't here for the research stream, uh, Unreal has a nice habit of crashing if you undo the movement of a BSP that you fat finger. Um, yeah, that drives me crazy. Actually, I think these textures are also a mixture of these, yeah. So if you guys didn't notice, I actually took the lights out of these panels right here because they were kind of painted in. So if you go back, You'll actually see what I did. Um, I went into Photoshop, I painted it out, made it flat, and then I put the lighting in on real manually so that it actually casts light like it would if it were an actual object rather than just a flat texture. I think the end result is pretty cool. Um, it could definitely be more convincing if it wasn't just a flat texture, but that's currently what we have to work with. So I'm going to just kind of shove these guys in here and figure out where it goes. I know there's one down here on the bottom of this block. I'm thinking this room, uh, if I look at the original, it is pretty dark, right? Uh, if I get a couple of rows of these uh, storage lights on the, on the sides of the walls here, I think it's going to look really cool, and it's going to definitely add some ambience to it. Especially if I make the top of these uh, of the ceiling, all these quartz fixtures, if I make them not reach the ground, and it stays kind of dark down here, it's going to give you that look 
Um, if you guys have ever watched The X-Files uh, in the first episode, I think it is, when, it might be the first, it's one of the first episodes when the cigarette smoking man walks into the government warehouse and there's all these lights in the ceiling and they barely hit the ground, but it's spooky looking as hell. It's gonna have that effect in here. So I'm gonna try to get that if I can. Not that I'm saying that the X-Files is gonna determine the design direction, but rather that I just think it's gonna look cool. And you know, honestly, half the job is figuring out what's gonna look best, so. Yeah, that's, when that bakes, that's gonna look so sweet. I can't wait to, to work with that. Let me check the chat real quick. I hope I'm not getting too far behind on you guys. Let's see here. <laughs> Game logic doesn't need to make sense. Well, I, I'm trying to make it make as much sense as it should within, you know, plausible reasons, I suppose. And yeah, we're, we're mostly working in uh, BSP, mm -hmm. uh, just for the block out currently. It's just the easiest way to build these levels out, especially since the original is literally nothing more than boxes. I mean, the entire game is boxes. That's pretty much how it was made. So, it kind of keeps in the tradition. Ah, oh, don't crash. Thank you. And the floor here is what? Again, why is this floor made out of lights? I don't understand. I, I never will. <laughs> I think I'm going to change that to probably be that grip surface that's found pretty much everywhere else in this area. This stuff right here. And it also needs to be aligned. Actually, it is aligned. Never mind, it's good. And this should actually be the repulsor lift, so I'm going to make a copy of this real quick. Stick that little guy over there. Now, before you uh, accuse me of, if you would, anyway, accuse me of uh, just changing things for the sake of change, I'm definitely trying to stay respectful of the original game as much as I can. I love this game more than most people probably should, but with that comes the realization that there's a lot of stuff in it that just doesn't make any damn sense at all. And I'm willing to accept and suspend my disbelief only to a certain extent. Um, like, for example, I think we should probably take some of the concept art that we've made for, like, the bathrooms and, like, actually put that into the version that I'm working on right now just to kind of answer the re the question, like, where did these people, like, sleep? Where do they go to the bathroom? Where do they eat? Stuff like that. Because this game had absolutely almost nothing in the way of living accommodations. There was a couple of beds, maybe some desks, cabinet here and there. That was really about it. Um, there wasn't much else. So I think for believability, it would be nice to have functioning, I don't know, sinks, uh, toilets, showers, things of that nature, just to show that people lived here at one point, even if they're all mutants now and or cyborgs. So, yeah, and another thing too, I, I like having the control over these lights that I seem to really only get by putting these light actors in. So, I could have put these in the texture and just kind of done it that way, kind of like I did with some of the floor pieces or in some of the, some of the lights, but there's only so much you can really do with that. Yeah, this is starting to come together. I like the way this looks. It's just gonna be a pain in the butt putting all these lights in here. <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, it's basically me trying to check the chat every so often. Carly's at her mom's house, so I don't want to have her, you know, not spend time with her family just to be on a game stream. I think, honestly, I think family's a little bit more important than that, but, you know, and I can handle the chat. It's not like you guys are talking too much. Hopefully that means you're just more interested in what I have to say rather than being bored. <laughs> so. All right. Did you seriously not copy? Come on. What the hell? Why is that not? Okay, so I hit Alt and then I drag and it just stops. And then it puts the pivot in a different point entirely. Thanks, Unreal. I love you too. This game makes no sense. And by game, I mean the game engine. Don't 
light can go away, so look at that one. And we need to put a light over here. I'm probably not going to keep the, um, the, the all the lights on on the top. I think uh, it would be good to have a couple of them turned off, maybe a couple of them flickering and being damaged. But this is actually coming together pretty well, and it does have that, that X-Files look I was talking about with like the storage bins on the wall and the incredibly bright overhead lights where you can't really see the ceiling. And then the floor is kind of a dim, dark, dank area. It's really, really cool stuff. Let's check chat again. Yeah, as far as the editor goes, uh, I keep it up. Uh, I could hide it, but I want you guys to see what we're working on. Um, and you can, you're welcome to download the Unreal Editor. I mean, it's for free. it's out there for free. Anybody can work with it. If you really want to see something someday, maybe I'll get permission to show off some of the personal work I've ever done. Um, you can check it out on my art station if you just look up my name on artstation.com. I'm kind of a train fanatic, so I made a <coughs> gigantic locomotive scene based on the wilderness of Florida here where I live. And yeah, that was that was a, about a year's worth of work, but man, it was really cool and a lot of fun to do. And every little bit of it was done in real time in the engine. So the same thing where I'm using right now, I was I used to make a I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but it, it looks almost like a picture. You can, you can tell in a couple spots that it's CG, but um, it was fun taking it to the Reddit and talking to the trains guys there, and some of them couldn't even tell that it wasn't, it wasn't real. All right, let's put this piece up here. So what I'm going to do with this piece that I just put in, I'm actually going to attach that wall panel that has the lights on it. This one doesn't have... Actually, this one doesn't have it either. So I need to actually go back, change this texture. And what I meant by it doesn't have, it doesn't have this bottom pillar thing. So let's switch that out for the other one. That, yeah, that's the one right there. So I need to switch this texture out that I just put on the wall for that one. And then I need to take this, move it over here, and then rotate it 90 degrees. And the reason why I'm rotating this light, um, this little... there's. It's a group, right? It's two different lights. One of them is a point light and one of them is not. And if I ungroup them, you'll see how it's set up. So the point light kind of emulates the the light that would emit from the, the actual bulb itself. And then the spotlight shows the um, actual lighting pattern that comes out of it, right? So the point light is it's actually long, right? Yeah, make sure this is aligned correctly. Yeah, it's aligned. It should be. Yeah, now it is. So you can see that it actually isn't just a pure circle, but it actually has kind of like a, it's like a line. So as I put this up to the wall, see how it's got like that line there? That's what I want, because I want it to match up to that point right there and kind of brighten those pixels that are right here. And that makes it look like it's a rim light, kind of what you would get from a, from a camera that's taking a photograph of a very bright light source, like the, the lip of the of the light kind of like has that extra shine to it. And that's what I'm kind of going for, trying to like enhance what's already in the texture, just to kind of make it a little bit more believable. Because if that was just dark like this, it wouldn't really shine like that and it wouldn't look like it was an active light, right? Now the consequence to this too is that it's in every other texture. So I would have to make another texture with the light off, and I probably could do that. It wouldn't be that hard to do. Um, but it just makes it look much better in the end, I think. So I have to go up this thing and do every single one of these. But thankfully it's not terribly hard. Just hold down Alt and drag them up. Yep. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Now some of the textures are a little like off. I need to like redo the uh, the UV mapping for them, which is really simple. There we go. Look how much better that looks. Now if you compare, like if I come to the same spot in shock one and then look up actually that was really dumb of me it's not even there <laughs> well it's there for now i like the way it looks i'm gonna leave it i think just add something to it it kind of like tells you that there is a spot like it would make sense to even have lights there to begin with because these are obviously shelves right so you would put boxes and stuff here wouldn't it make sense to like put lights next to a spot where you can kind of go up and down and then you could just like reach out and grab stuff on the way up and down and put stuff away I mean, it is a storage level after all, and you kind of want to see where you're putting stuff away. You don't want to just like bang your head into something that you can't see sitting there. 
So if it doesn't work out, I can always take it out later. It's not really hard to do. But the nice thing about this too, the way I've got this set up right now, is I can actually grab all these lights and then grab that entire BSP chunk and just tear it off as a copy. Assuming the pivot didn't change again, which it did. There it goes. And then rotate this 180 degrees. And then push this. I really wish the pivot was down here. Hold on a second. Much better. Push this over here. All right, now turn the lights back on. And there you go. Now you have that entire stack going all the way up, although it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right here in this spot. So I will fix that at some undetermined point because that just looks weird the way it's sitting there. Although it kind of doesn't. I don't know. I think I'm going to take it out for the time being. So if we hop all the way back up here, I don't even know what this is. It says catwalk, but that doesn't look like any catwalk I've ever seen. Um, pretty sure that we could probably improve on this a little bit visually. Um, it's also using a super low res texture. I mean, I would be surprised if this was like 32 pixels. Um, and I don't even have the jump jet, so I can't even really fly around this place. So maybe I can make it jump across. Now, see, you can't even run across here either. Oh, I guess you can. It's really hard. There's something, the way this, this game treats collision, like I'm kind of bouncing as I go between, yeah, you see how it's, it doesn't like that it's walking over this spot. Ugh. There we go, made it across. So there's a ton of these different rooms with these data transfer arrays in them, so I can add those in as well. Uh, let's see, here we go. And of course I fat fingered it and it moved. If you see this yellow, um, outline that I've got for this selection and it disappears, that's because I accidentally moved my mouse when I clicked. And then for some reason Unreal thinks that I want to move the whole thing. It's a little goofy. This isn't even set up correctly, it needs to be remapped. I'll check chat in a sec, just give me one moment here. Surface box, apply, and now it's not even aligned correctly, vertically. Lovely. Uh, it's always something. There we go. I do like the way that looks though, that's, that's really cool. It's definitely a bit more interesting than the original is. And my wife pointed out that it looks like these guys are dancing. Like they're in like a rave or like a disco club. <laughs> I can't unsee that now. I, I never thought of it like that. And now it really bothers me when I look at them. <laughs> so. And I actually do have a third monitor. A uh, funny story, the third one actually broke. So the other day, I just it's, it's had a lighting issue on the bottom right of it for a while, and then turned it on, and it just stopped working. So I think the LED just kind of crapped out. It should be here tomorrow, but of course it doesn't come the day I need it. So that's kind of why it's kind of hard to keep up to chat, but that's okay. So let's see here. Most of you guys said... And as far as uh, emissive textures go, I actually do that already. Um, these lights are already set to emit light. So as you see down here, I'm using emissive for static lighting. And this already fills this room with a little bit of light. Not a terrible amount. Although I'm surprised that the light maps just look so bad in here. Uh, that's definitely not what they should look like. I and mean, this is decent resolution worth of light mapping. So I think it just needs to be rebaked. I think it lost all of the lighting that I put into it because I, yeah, it definitely lost all the lighting because when I added the lights a minute ago, it pretty much erased everything that was in here already. So it's just kind of like an approximation of what it would look like. And if I grab this light, move it down and then up, it will actually show the uh, the actual lighting again. So such is life. I'd have to bake it again to, for it to show up correctly. But that's okay. You know what? I'm going to set this catwalk. So it's going to have the same texture as the rest of the floors in this zone. It should be this. Except it doesn't work on this particular part. But I bet this next one will, this other grip surface. That kind of works. If that was to align that a little bit better, I think it would work. It's a good stopgap for the time being.
this is kind of a strange room anyway, the way it's set up. I think when we go around to, to working on it in SSR, I think it's going to be redesigned, where it's still going to be the same room. It's just going to have more of a logical design, um, be less weird. <laughs> I mean, making a mistake the way Citadel is built now is a little weird, and that's part of its charm, but I think maybe tempering some of that weirdness with a bit of, not realism, but just functionality that kind of makes it believable is probably a good thing. So. And of course, the textures are misaligned again, so let's push that down. There we go. These things have lights in them too, don't they? Yeah, it's those quartz lights, so let's add those in there too. Oh boy. For fun, uh, fun fact for those of you guys who don't know, this actually right here is the room you go to on... Well, when you get to the point where you need to destroy the antenna relays, you have to come back here to grab enough plastique to destroy them. Don't put that up there. I need this instead. There we go. Let's add some of these lights down here. <clears throat> stuff. Now this is really coming together. I'm loving the way this is starting to look. It's got kind of a creepy vibe, yet it's still... It's not as... I don't know. Not as weird looking, but it, it still retains that kind of flavor, I suppose. Come on, let me jump. Thank you. Come here, monkey cat. Alright, so the rest of this needs to be textured up. So I only missed that wall panel somehow. There we go. It's going to be really cool doing these these panels too and kind of imagining what they would actually look like. Because um, you can tell that these are shelves of some sort. And I would assume that large boxes get put in here. So it would be cool to actually put boxes in here and maybe have more, more loot that you could look through. Maybe have some forklifts or something down here that would roll around. I think we have concept art for something similar to it. Um... Part of the job of, of doing SSR, I would say, is also not just building what was there, but building what wasn't, um, just to kind of add to it. And having, you know, like the the med beds and the nurse computers and the little, you know, medical carts and stuff. You saw some of that stuff in the original game, like the carts especially, um, but a lot of it just didn't exist for various reasons. So getting to, uh, to put that in is really cool. As much as I love doing what I'm doing now, I can't wait to get back to working on uh, art assets again. It's, it's really, really fun to take Rob's concepts and turn them into reality. There we go. Yeah, that's going to look really cool. I can't wait. Keep moving these lights around for the time being. I'm really amazed how much time has already passed. I feel like I've only been on for like five minutes, yet it's been close to 40. That's crazy. <laughs> time really flies when I'm working on this project. I don't really feel like I've been working on this whole thing for more than a couple of months, but not even months, maybe like a month. But it's been several months uh, since I joined and things have definitely moved at a very quick pace. So I'm really excited to see what comes at the end of September for you guys. Um, in regards to that comment, I'm sure someone's going to ask when is the, the uh, alpha coming out. I can't give you a concrete date on that. Uh, I can't even guarantee that what I'm doing is going to be done because this is a very labor-intensive process what I'm doing right now. Like checking each room and making sure everything fits and everything looks the same, it's a lot of work. Um, my part might not even be done completely by the time that starts. But at least a couple of levels will be in there. At least. I'm shooting for about 75%. I would prefer you guys not to play in a gray box, if at all possible. Those of you who get invited. 
I just think that having the textures in here and an actual approximation of what the final product will look like is probably better than just, not that a gray box is bad, but you know, for imagination's sake, please don't crash. Oh, I swear if you crash on stream, I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> oh no, don't crash. No, 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 don't do it to me. Oh, thank God. I'm gonna save that. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> oh, I feel like that came so close. This engine is a beautiful piece of uh, engineering, but it is also very frustrating when it doesn't do what you want it to do. feels like a horror movie for a second there. I'm just watching the, the, the time go by in slow motion. See what a few minutes of work does to this? Doesn't it look so much better? Let's just turn off the preview shadows. There we go. I mean, you can, you can really see where this is starting to come together and the original designs were well, maybe not the best they could possibly be when they're done with the same intent you can really get an idea of what that was really supposed to look like rather than kind of what the game was allowed to, to demonstrate at that point like you know you see all these lights in the wall but i think most of us when we played through it you didn't really even register in your head that there was actually a light it kind of just looks like a just a different colored version of the pillar there I mean, maybe it was supposed to be a light, but there's only so much you can do, and, and painting in uh, textures doesn't really do a whole lot for the the look of a game. Even even back then, it, it's there's only so much you can do. But man, like seeing this, like if I look at the same view, turn off my headlight here, and then go back and put my camera in the same spot. That's interesting. Oh, that's weird. Okay, there we go. So if you switch back and forth here, that looks more believable to me than that does. And not that this is bad, it is, I mean, pretty much what it is. It's a product of 1994, but even taking the original work and just kind of setting it up for physical-based rendering, it's just such a humongous leap in the right direction for it, I think. Yeah, so a third player is mentioning that, like when he was working on his mod, uh, Rewired, that he actually noticed that these are lights. I didn't notice they were lights, honestly, until I started working on this project. They just blended in so much. It was very difficult to tell what they were. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is much better looking now. I was actually coming here originally to grab a door, so let me go grab that, because I know the other ones need that door too. And that's why I went over here, because Sabo's office has the door that I need. Oh, you know what? Let me get out of here, and I'll show you guys what I did to Sabo's office too. Uh, I think, hopefully you guys will like that. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Whee! Let's go downstairs. Okay, so here's Sable's office as it existed back in 94. Somebody got mad and threw a chair around the room, some trash, a hunk of clothes that for some reason renders through the floor. There's some weird stuff in this game, man. <laughs> like, why is that even happening? <laughs> it's probably something to do with transparency. It just renders behind it. it. doesn't do it over the door, though, but the door is actually transparent, so that could be part of it. And why is it that when I'm standing here and I close the door, it hits me? Why is that? What is going on? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't even understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. All right, so here's Sabo's office. And if we come in here, you can see I've kind of made it look more like an office, a little bit less like a, a room full of ducks, uh, which is what these all ostensibly are, according to the naming. Um, I didn't want it to look like perfect, like a like a high-end triop office would, 
but I definitely want it to look more like a storage office, so it's got some beat-up walls made out of steel, some of this plastic paneling. I may change some of the reflectivity of these panels, I think it may be a little too shiny, but I'm pretty happy with it, I think it's okay. And this is going to be a screen, so just ignore it being white for now. Uh, I also need to get the models from the original game so I can start sprinkling them around, so we can have the, the uh, bed in the background and the desk. I have a hard time believing Sabo slept in his office. I mean, what is he really doing in here? Like, he's got a table, a chair, a desk, a bed, no microwave, which this game actually does have microwaves, interestingly enough. So why doesn't he have a microwave in his office if he has a bed and a table? The more you inspect this game, the more some of it kind of falls apart. <laughs> like, if I come... And I think it's in here. No, it's not. It's not in this area. You have to go through here. And maybe if I could if I bounce high enough, I can get up there. Nope. Actually, I can just use this. There we go. Microwaves. Right there. Microwave oven. Now, I want to believe that they put these microwave ovens in only as a reference to the 80s song. Um... I want my MTV, money for nothing. That's my guess. But, I mean, because you have this entire storage room, right? And you got some control pedestals kind of laying around. You got some boxes, a couple security robots floating around. And then you have microwave ovens. And if anybody's ever heard that song, you know, like the lyrics are basically, I, I want my MTV, I, I want my... Uh, I have to install microwave ovens, something, something, custom delivery. And I guarantee that's why those are here. Because it was made not too long after that song came out. So, and interestingly enough, we're right back to where we started. So, now I just actually came coming back here to grab that door. So let me, before I get to sidetracked yet again, I'm gonna put that door where it belongs. Let's see if I can do it without actually moving my viewpoint around. This is the main area. This is... No, nah, it's not going to happen. I need to move my viewpoint. This should be Sabo's office down here. Oh, that's actually the medical area. Okay, I didn't go very far. <laughs> Let me move this thing. Whee. Should be back here. No, no, close. Should be really close. Okay, I'm in the nice jump human area. Go this way. And go to the right. It should be here. Yeah, it's right over here. Yeah, there we go. I have a decent idea of where I'm at. Played this damn game enough times to have an idea of where I'm at at any point. Okay, so this door goes up here. And now, if anybody remembers, this room is like my most hated room in this entire game um, and there's a very simple reason why there's a button on the ground that button does two things it enables the force bridges that connect these particular areas together but it also makes them go crazy so if you watch you'll see the force bridges go on and off non-stop watch what happens when I turn the sound on out of this room. Every time you go near that area, that is all you will hear. And you can't turn it off. It's forever. Absolutely forever. It is like the worst sound in the game. I hate it so much. It's about as bad as that area on medical with that door that doesn't stop malfunctioning when you turn the lights on. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, it's... I hate it. I hate it so much. I, I hope we never like have something that annoying in our version of the game. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know. I have to check chat. Someone has to feel that pain. Yeah, someone knows. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've hated that for so many years, and I've always wanted to fix it, and I, now I have the chance. I can get it right the first time. <laughs> if, that, if that bug 
or that feature, whatever you want to call it, goes through, I will literally eat my own hat on stream. And that doesn't mean Steve has the right to just make it slip through unexpectedly so I have to eat my hat. Not happening. I will I will make it, I will brute force that thing out of the game. I don't care. It is not going in the final product. <laughs> All right, let's see. I should probably wrap it up in the next 10 minutes. So I've gotten a decent chunk of this particular area done, but you, can, you guys can see even with me talking and trying to focus, this takes a lot of work, right? So my part of it may not be done by September, but I'm doing my best. I'll try to get it done for you guys, um, you know, without going crazy. I have other things I have to do as well, but I will do everything I can to get this done to completion. So you guys have some, or at least a testing group has something cool to play through. And you guys have something, something, have something neat to look at. I've been talking so much, I need a drink, but that'll be after the stream. Oh, here we go. I want to show you guys uh, research here in a second. I'm actually going to fix this room real quick. This just needs to be pushed up. And that should overwrite the other VSP. And it does! Woohoo! And that has an incandescent bulb in it, so we just need to toss that in. Grab one of these. If you guys haven't noticed either, I'm actually using color temperatures on this. Um, for those of you who don't know, color temperatures define the color of a particular light source. Um, incandescent bulbs tend to be very warm. Um, it's one of the reasons why incandescent bulbs tend to be better if you stay up late at night, or just warm lights in general. Uh, it's potentially been proven that looking at blue light sources, such as computer monitors, can cause issues. It's one of the reasons why when I work sometimes late at night I'll wear these, um, just because they're yellow tinted, kind of help make it easier for me to get to sleep at night. I still have a hard time believing they would use uh, incandescent bulbs in 2072 though. But when this game was made, they probably had no idea that you could even have compact fluorescent bulbs, much less LEDs. So it's just one of those things that makes it nice and retro sci-fi. So we'll have to leave it in there just because it's cool. All right. So with this part done, let me go ahead and show you guys the, the playthrough on, well, playthrough on research. This should still have all of its lighting intact, too. So we'll go ahead and start off in Delta Quad, where we would normally start. You can see the new door. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to share that off just yet, but it looks cool. I don't think it works yet, either. Oh. Yeah, definitely doesn't work just yet. But it looks so cool. Uh, it's fully animated and everything. I've seen it work. I can't wait to play with this in the new version of the game. Um, but yeah, as you start off, you know, you've got the same text and font and everything, so we got level 2's research here. Um, I enabled all the emissive lights that would have been in the original game if they had the ability to have them. If you're getting any nostalgia vibes here, I hope, it, I hope you are. Um, it's super cool. This area is nice and dark. I put a control pedestal kind of back where it belongs. Uh, if you come in here... Doors don't operate just yet, so I kind of have to um, keep, you know, zooming in and out. It's a shame that the, um, what do you call it, the, what, does, what are those things called? The repulsor lifts don't work just yet. Most of the doors don't either, but we're getting to that point. It should be pretty soon. Come up here, and then you're over in the cyborg conversion area. I tried to make the uh, energy conduits kind of emissive, and, you know kick some light out like they kind of alluded to in the original. So I like the way that looks. And hey, look, it even has, uh, you know, text on it, too. Sensor grids hiding in there. Should be some light. I haven't added it yet, though. Some of these areas are nice and dark like they were in the original. Got some subtle incandescent bulbs in the ceiling. 
The lighting is very preview, so if you see any weird glitches, it's like right up here. It's just a result of, of the uh, lighting system needing to be rebuilt and built at a higher quality. This is just for testing purposes. Beta Quad is finished. This is actually what I was working on the last stream I did. Really like the way this one came out, uh, but I'm most proud of, uh, I would say, Alpha Quad, which we'll kind of walk over to in a second. I'm trying to go into as much as I can, given the, um, what do you call it, um, lack of operating doors currently. All right, let's fly out of here and go to Alpha Quad. We'll go into the big room in the center too in a second. There we go. I love the way Alpha looks, especially with these color temperature lights with a nice warmth to them. Really kind of sets the tone and the mood of that particular area. Like these fluorescent bulbs kind of like have a blue tint to them, especially with these uh, fluorescent bulbs on the side of the, uh, the wall panels. And you walk into this place and it just, it, it's a very different feel entirely, just from the color of warmth. Now this area I've kind of theorized that Shodan has essentially been wrecking it for purposes unknown. So it doesn't look like the rest of the station, mostly because it's being rebuilt and destroyed. Um, some parts of it are still left intact, like, you know, Darcy's office. But a lot of it's just like titanium panels all over the place. Ignore the collision on the floor. We need to set that up a little bit better. So we're getting there. This is mostly just for preview and, and viewing, not for gameplay. So don't get disheartened if it doesn't work perfectly just yet. <laughs> it will. We got to get to that point. Now, in the original game, this actually says high power light, and if you look at the original, they're definitely not very high powered. So if they're hurting your eyes, that's a good thing. That's kind of what they're supposed to do. Um, this corridor is also an example of that. Like, this is only lit by these lights, and I love the way this looks. It's got kind of a nice spooky ambience to it. Like, if I was to take the mutant and toss him in here, I bet it would have a nice look. Damn, he's big. Jeez, look at this guy. Let's get his hand up the wall. Good lord, he's a monster. Look how big he is. Yeah, I, I don't want that guy running up at me, I'll tell you that. I mean, you just, like, you're running through here, right? And then you just come around the corner, and then, oh, look what's waiting here for me. Oh, god. That is just creepy and gross. But I love the way the lights really kind of add to what was a very bland kind of walkway slash hallway before. Um, but yeah, further along into this room, you'll see the, uh, the rest of the lighting system I built for it. Now keep in mind, all these lights, like these high power lights, those are exactly where they are in the original game, so I'm not just putting them there to blind you. It's just where they were. This, however, wasn't. I just thought it looked better kind of made more sense to me. This room, I think, is one of the best looking rooms I've done so far, just because this texture comes to life with the animated uh, emissiveness. Because if you get close to them, you can see they're actually flickering. I've actually added that to it to, to try to match the emissive work that Chris has done. Um, I just like the way it looks. I think it adds a bit of character to it. And makes it look, look like less static, more realistic. As realistic as this can look anyway, you know? So. There's a room in here that you can look at. Nothing too terribly interesting. You got Darcy's office. Kind of blinged it up a little bit. Try to use the this uh, titanium texture as kind of a trim for some of these wall panels to make it pop out more. Uh, before I go into the major room, let me check the chat, see what you guys are saying. Sorry if I'm not being as responsive to you as I normally would be. It's just very tough to balance working and talking. Um, let's see here. If you've lived in space for a while, you tend to lengthen. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure uh, mutagenic virus has nothing to do with that, right? Um, yeah, so you guys like the way Alpha looks, huh? That's really cool. I'm glad that it's uh, really kind of coming together for you. Um, I mean, dead honest, this texture was really bad looking in the original game. Uh, I could not use it one-to-one. -one. If we actually go back to level two, 
you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, let's see, game easy might actually be there. Look, this is level three. Ooh, let's get out of here. Level two. Let's go back to. Did you guys step on the dog? <laughs> is he okay? Okay. Let's see, alpha quad, alpha quad. There we are. So if you look at the original texture in here, uh, you'll see that it has these built-in reflections. So you can tell that, oh, you were really annoying. Get out of my face. Um, you can tell that it's supposed to be highly reflective and kind of shiny, right? Maybe not as much as I made it, but I think it looks better in the end. Just one of those decisions I just kind of made on my own. I just thought it would look better and I think it kind of fits the aesthetic of the game a bit more. So if we look, like, let's, let's try this this spot, and then sit in the exact same spot. I honestly, I think it looks better objectively, but that's always a matter of opinion. But I think the, the floor reflections, the walls kind of being metal and not metal simultaneously, um, I think it just, it adds a whole new dimension to the original art. Uh, like I said, I painted out these reflections here so that you don't get that um, fake stuff in it. Because like this texture is not only is it providing all of the reflective, like the reflective qualities, which I can control on a, on a slider that I built, but it also drives the the depth. You see those the depth that you see there? That's coming from the like black makes a push in, white makes a push out. If I still had this dark and light here in the center, it would look like somebody had taken like a. a like someone had taken Freddy Krueger claws to it and just ripped it apart. So in here it makes more sense, I think. Just given the, the way the system works, the way PBR works, it has to be set up this way. Otherwise it just looks really, really bad. So I did promise to show you the main area too. So let's go over there and take a look. So this is affectionately known as the ambush room. Um, this is where you go after you want to go activate the laser. The second you've got all of the prerequisites to activating the laser without destroying Earth in the process set up, you drop down. Well, you don't drop down. Cyborgs drop down from pretty much every spot in this room. This door opens up. This door over there opens up. There's mines all over the floor. Uh, I didn't add the repulsor lifts that make them come down just yet. Uh, laser controls in here. This room's a little bit better lit than a lot of the rooms are. Um, I just think it's a nice contrast. I could make it darker. I may actually end up doing that. Just let these major lights right here do all the, the work. Um, my reasoning would be that maybe Shodan put these in here so that you'd be blinded when you walk in. So that you'd have a harder time killing the, the massive amount of cyborgs that come out of the woodwork to kill you. I mean, because you are, after all, nothing more than an insect with, you know, human eyes. And this kind of stuff bothers you, where it doesn't bother cyborgs whatsoever. So... There's that to it. Yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Really glad you guys came out to watch. Um, it's so cool to work on this and really better yet, like that you guys like what we're doing right now. Um, I think my ambition and my drive has a limit. Like I can only do this so much, right? And with you guys really enjoying what we're working on, I think it really makes me wanna work that much harder just so I wanna see you guys happy. So, Thanks for being there, and thanks for, you know, sticking with us. It could have been a lot worse uh, without you guys' support, and I think you guys really make this project what it is. I mean, if, if we weren't doing it for you, uh, there wouldn't really be much of a reason to do it at all. We're, we're fans as much as anyone else is, and doing it for the fans, I think, is the best reason of all. So it's, it's cool that you guys are here, and really, really appreciate it. Um, that being said, like I said, I'm going to sign off, but... I'll engage in the chat for a little bit because I've totally been neglecting it and I'm so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, um, let me uh, hide some of these windows so that I can actually see what you guys are talking about. There we go. That's easier. So I can still kind of float around in here. Um, while I'm here too, check out what I did to this particular area. It's no nothing major, but if you go to the original spot, I'm not going to stop talking if I keep showing this stuff off. <laughs> um, Let's go down here to get into that particular spot. We actually have to go into the back of Delta to get here. Come on. Let me run, please. I know I'm tired, but I'm not tired for real. I just want to run. 
Come on. All right, so in the back here. I have no idea if we're looking for a developer right now. That would be a Steve question, and I think it would probably be posted on the site. Um, I'm sure we're going to be looking for more people in the future, though. Okay, so here's the same spot that we saw earlier, or just a second ago, inside my rework. I think this makes a lot more sense. I'm not entirely sure who would put ducks everywhere in this particular area. Um, honestly, I just really found it kind of silly, just seeing ducks pretty much everywhere, non-stop ducks everywhere. I wanted to turn it more into like a maintenance area. So one of the unifying themes is that maintenance areas have the, um, what do you call it? Maintenance areas have these floor tiles, right? And they also tend to have these lights in the top. And they also tend to be a bit more dank and a little bit more dark than the rest of the station. So trying to keep that, that theme going, uh, I think kind of makes, you kind of have a cohesive feel to the rest of the station. And no matter where you go, you know where you are and what that purpose of that room is. And you, you have that design language in anything, really. Like, you know what a, a maintenance area is in a building that you work at because it's not decorated with nice panels and it, and it has exposed piping and stuff, right? So that's kind of the thought here, too. Like, because this, these floor tiles are obviously, like, they have hand grips in them so you can pull them up and you can work on the exposed wiring and stuff that would be beneath them just so they're, they're easy to maintain rather than looking cool. Although I like the way they look, so, I mean, I think it's kind of like a... I find beauty and utility sometimes. I just like the way these tiles look. I actually made a model of them. I, I'm hoping that the model that I made will actually get to use. They're, I have it set up so you can actually pull them off the ground and stuff. So, um, so yeah, as far as remade textures, I was working on that, but because I'm working on this right now, it's kind of taken a halt. We have another artist who just joined. Her name's Matilda, and she's working on some of that currently. Uh, I can't really elaborate too much beyond that. It does take a bit of time to make this stuff, so even if I was back on it, it would still take a long time to get to that point. I mean, art is going to be the longest part of this entire project. Programming moves pretty quick. Uh, not incredibly quick, but it moves quicker than art tends to. Um, it's one of the reasons why art teams tend to be very large. Ours, however, is not. We do a lot with what we have, though. Um, I mean, Pretty much the only thing that's gotten me through getting everything you guys see here to where it is currently is just a crazy amount of love for this game. <laughs> um, and knowing where a lot of this stuff is, and just... I'm sorry, that just looks cool. I, I just realized that when I made those lights go in there, it just really adds a lot. I'm kind of glad I put them in. It doesn't make any sense, it's just ducks, but it looks cool. Um, yeah, so sound design and music, that's not my place to talk about. I know we have a guy that does that, that does amazing work. I'm sure he'll be back soon. Uh, we're just not prioritizing that right now, so I can't really comment on it. I try not to talk about stuff I don't know about. I'm very self-conscious about that. I prefer not to speak about things unless I'm absolutely confident that what I'm talking about is going to be, like, something that I can confidently 100%, like, speak about, right? Um, so, let's see, anything else? Um, yeah, if you guys got any other questions, you know, feel free to ask now. I've got a couple more minutes before I gotta head out. But, yeah. Next stream, hopefully storage will be done, so by the time you guys see that, you'll actually have a chance to see this as a completed level. And then you'll see, hopefully you'll see me working on medical, which I don't really want to work on medical because it's gigantic for the same reason I don't want to work on systems engineering because it's also gigantic but that's just the way life is you got to do some things you don't want to do to, to make the cool stuff so uh, I don't see any more questions I think you guys are all done so I'm going to head out but really glad you guys came and showed up I'll be back very soon I, I stream three more times this month so thanks for being here guys and see you next time